Uh, good afternoon. It's my privilege to offer the uh, Global RIR update. And um, I have to start with a couple of disclaimer slides uh, because of the nature of the topic. So um, uh, this is the regional registry system. We all know it well. Aaron serves uh, Canada and the United States and the about half of the Caribbean. Lacnic serves South America, Mexico, the other half of the Caribbean, right, for Europe. Afrinic for Africa, Asia Pacific for the Asia Pacific Rim. Um, I want to talk about developments in one of the other RIRs. Normally this wouldn't be my topic. It's not the type of thing I would present before Nanog. Uh, but the system is reliant on all five RIRs being operational and stable. So significant developments that could affect that I need to bring in front of you so you're aware uh, of the possibilities that we face. Uh, Aaron does not normally comment on disputes or litigation in another RIR. Uh, but here I am commenting anyway because you folks need to stay up to date. Um, there's some implications to this and some liability that is incurred. We tried to be very accurate with the slides, tried to footnote them, make sure they're sourced. But some of this actually is not information easily obtained. So you're going to have to bear with me in that it's not quite as complete as I would otherwise like. Okay, notable legal developments. A lot of these slides have been updated, but, so I'm gonna go through them from the beginning. If you've been past Nanogs, you may have heard a little bit of this saga, uh, but just bear with me. Um, in 2020, AFRANET completed a registry audit. Uh, and as a result of the registry audit, had questions about the, um, the number resource usage of one of its customers, a customer called Cloud Innovation, uh, whose principal is Mr. Lu Heng. Afrinic determined the resources weren't being utilized for the purposes for which they were issued and would be revoked after a suitable time to let the customers migrate off them. Mr. Liu and his businesses disputed Afrinic's authority to enforce that provision of the customer agreement. And that started us with the dispute. Um, there were several legal actions in court uh, uh, that were taken in order to prevent the address blocks from being returned. Afrinic is based in Mauritius, and so uh, that's where the cases took place. And uh, for, uh, most of the orders were filed by Cloud Innovation Limited, uh, CIL. One of those motions froze Afrinic's accounts, um, a garnishment order, uh, which prevented them from paying for uh, suppliers, vendors, customers, salaries, things like that. Uh, when that happened, the RIRs collectively got involved because Again, the registry system doesn't work if one-fifth of it disappears. Um, as it turns out, uh, Afrinic was able to get the garnishment order uh, modified uh, so that they were able to continue uh, their operations as normal. Um, in uh, 2022, there was an injunction entered in court that prevented Afrinic from holding its annual elections just prior to their member meeting, their AGMM. They were going to be electing additional directors and um, Cloud Innovation sought an injunction because the terms of the election didn't seem to conform with the expectations in their bylaws. Um, that injunction was issued, and as a result, after the AGMM, uh, the Afrinic Board of Directors lacked sufficient quorum uh, directors to hold quorum, hold business, uh, or even hold another meeting. Very problematic. Uh, so we ended up with a circumstance where Afrinic had insufficient directors and couldn't self-cure that problem. They couldn't appoint more directors, they couldn't hold a meeting to hold election for directors. Uh, very challenging. Uh, there were several attempts to appoint directors to ask the relief of the court to appoint directors to allow them to solve this problem, and that was unsuccessful. Um, eventually, Afrinic CEO Eddie Ferreira, his employment was not extended beyond November 2020, uh, would have had to have been done by the board chair, uh, Benjamin Eschen. Uh, so they were without a board and became um, without board quorum and also became without a CEO. Um, there were provisions that allowed the chairman of the board and the CEO to operate under emergency provisions, sign contracts, things like that. But without the president, uh, without the CEO, that became impossible. Uh, that created challenges for running the Afrinic registry because you don't have someone who can authoritatively enter into a contract necessarily. You have uncertainty when it comes to decisions because your board uh, has insufficient quorum to meet 
and you don't have a CEO to listen to. Um, in the last year, in 2023, there was filing by one of the members of Afrinic seeking ability to hold elections, and in September, an order was entered appointing an official receiver, an OR, of Mauritius. This is a receiver appointed by the court to oversee the affairs, hold an election for the Afrinic board within six months, and work towards the appointment of a CEO. Now, generally, when you have an official receiver, nine out of ten times, even more than that, actually, their job is to wind down an organization. That's what receivers do. When you have a company that is uh, insolvent or uh, has challenges, you have to make sure the affairs are wound up properly. Courts will appoint an official receiver. In this case, the receiver was specifically appointed not to wind down Afrinic, but rather appointed to oversee the affairs and to hold an election within six months. Um, this was actually something, if you go look at the NRO, the Number Resource Organization, or you go look at our website, you'll see various comments where we've said this is a good development because it allowed the members to elect the board and get Afrinic back on the road. Uh, as it is, I've described it as sort of uh, having gone off the shoulder and down the hill, and uh, we need to get Afrinic lifted up and back on the road. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, so uh, again, in September, after the appointment of the receiver, the NRO, the Number Resource Organization, actually issued a statement. The NRO welcomes the developments of the legal proceedings effective Afrinic. With successful execution, these will resolve the Afrinic to a functional, restore Afrinic to a functional governance with the election of an executive board and appointment of a CEO. So step forward. Um, in late September, an appeal was lodged by Afrinic's external litigation counsel. Afrinic was involved in litigation and had external counsel. Um, challenging the appointment order of the official receiver. And that resulted in an automatic suspension of the official receiver's authority. There was also a filing by Cloud Innovation Limited challenging the acceptance of that appeal that suspended the automatic stay and restored authority of the official receiver. And then there was an injunction order prevented um, the previous directors um, Eshin and another one, Viv, there were two directors whose terms had finally expired in September from acting on behalf of Afrinic or interfering uh, with the official receiver. So we had an appeal, then we had a challenge to that, and then we had a motion to prevent interference with the OR, and it looked like we were back on track. Uh, in October, the uh, Previous chair of Afrinic, Ben Eshin, obtained a discharge of the injunction gag order. In addition, there's a discharge of the suspension of the automatic stay of the OR. When I try to describe this to people, they ask, why is this complicated? It's complicated because of things like this. A discharge of a suspension of an automatic stay. When you count the negatives, that effectively means the OR's authority is again suspended, pending the hearing of the appeal against the order. Okay, so we ended up in October again without an official receiver who could start working on elections to get things people people appointed. Uh, Eshin made an application to the Supreme Court to appoint three directors for purposes, among them, of holding an AGMM, which would have allowed them to have an election. That's an alternative route. Appoint some directors, and if I have enough directors, I can hold a, a meeting, and my I can have the board schedule an AGMM, a, a members meeting, and the meeting can hold an election. Uh, but doing it uh, via appointed directors rather than an official receiver. Um, and Eshin appealed the order, and this appeal was set aside. It's understood that Eshin is now seeking leave to appeal to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council of the UK. Um, interestingly enough, Mauritius, while it's out in the middle of <laughs> the waters off Afrinic, Africa, um, its legal system ultimately has a tie to the Privy Council in the UK. If everything is can't possibly be resolved because all avenues have been exhausted, then judicial disputes are resolved in that manner. So we currently do not have an OR. So we don't have an official receiver. We also don't have appointed directors. Uh, we therefore have no party who can call an AGMM or call an election. Uh, the Afrinic staff continues to be heroes throughout this whole thing. 
I want to know that this has been multiple years that the staff remain at their desk without any clear leadership. And, and we thank them. And we've actually, uh, the RIRs have done everything we can to support the staff. We're 100%. If they need anything, we, they know we're there for them. But it's a challenging time to be in an organization that lacks proper governance. Um, on 20, this year, on the 2nd of February, the Supreme Court of Mauritius issued a judgment setting aside uh, one of the applications, the order put by Logic Web, which was the member I referenced two slides back, to intervene in the appeal. So that's been set aside. Um, currently, we're waiting two determinations. An appeal against the official receiver order is yet to be heard. Um, and then Eshin's appeal against setting aside the application to appoint directors for purpose of holding an AGMM. Both of those are still in the Mauritius legal system, and they're somewhat contradictory. We're not quite log jammed, but we're close. In some ways, it would be good if we were log jammed, because when there's no further recourse available to parties, they're then able to avail themselves of the Privy Council of the UK. So, very challenging situation. Uh, has not been resolved, in fact, has been at loggerheads among multiple parties. Um, I'll say Aaron is not a party to this. We're just watching and making sure the staff knows we're here to support them. Our assessment. Uh, so we have to keep the registry system running. And we provide you um, internet number registry services on the assumption that there's a cohesive whole system. And so anything that endangers that is an important thing for us to pay attention to. We have significant litigation. There are insufficient directors to hold a board meeting or call a members meeting. The petitions to the court for temporary relief have not been granted. Um, the petition to appeal the order appointing the OR is a process that's likely to take a year or more. At this time, Africa's operations do not appear significantly impacted. They're processing customer requests, their services are running. That's a testament to the, to the dedication of their staff, as I said. But it's a long process to get this resolved. Um, without a clear process for an election, uh, we can't give a more specific time frame. We're continuing to monitor, to watch developments, to see if there's any way we can assist. Um, and uh, we see the appointment of the official receiver as being the most straightforward path, but as long as there's legal challenges to that, that will prove problematic. Um, and again, we and the other RIRs, uh, and ICANN as well, I have to say, ICANN has been instrumental in offering support as well, all standing by to help Afrinic if it needs it at some time through this process. Um, there was recently a blog post by a group called the Number Resource Society. Now, if I go back here, you'll see we talk about the NRO and the NRO statement. I want to point out, this is the Number Resource Organization. It's made up of the, the RIRs, the five RIRs. Um, when I talk about a blog post, I have letters in common, NR. But the last letter is S, that's NRS, Number Resource Society. Number Resource Society is an organization that's um, been formed to get people involved in the registry system. I will say that uh, it has issued a number of interesting press communications, and you can find them on the website. They have a number of interesting videos. Um, it would not be misstatement to say some of them are inflammatory. It's uh, at times been not complimentary of the RIRs or the number resource organization. Um, the NRS did recently release a blog post commenting on Afrinic. It specifically referenced former chair Ben Eschen. Uh, previously under the official receiver, the court directed effort was underway to hold elections. And due to Eschen's filings, the efforts of the OR have been suspended. And it calls out that as being the challenge in getting this resolved is Ben Eschen's activities. Um, uh, Eschen's term has expired, at least as far as we can tell. He was appointed, and last year in September his term is up, but he continues to hold himself out as the Afrinic board chair, which is somewhat confusing. We're not sure of the basis of that. Um, while the NRS blog post is one perspective on the matter, the court filings referenced are factual, and it's clear that 
his act, Ben Eshin's activities have prevented resolution of this matter. And uh, we continue to watch Afrinic, continue to uh, do, watch the developments, and hope that everyone's acting to try to get this resolved. But we have not seen that historically. Over the last year and a half, it appears as though this has gotten more complicated and more intractable rather than moving towards resolution. So, thank you. I'll take questions now. Yes. Hello, Sergei Masayadov, uh, not affiliated at the moment. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Can you briefly tell uh, about what is happening with the membership development and members' fees of uh, AFRIC? Of AFRIC membership development and member fees. So we actually, um, to my knowledge, there's no change there because there's no board that could possibly contemplate such changes. So um, right now, AFRIC is operating in a sort of status quo mode. It's very difficult for them to actually change their um, mode of behavior uh, short of having a governing board, and there is none. So I'm unaware of any activities in that area. So uh, do you, at least do, do you know if they are accepting the new members? Oh, well, uh, there was a period of time when they, the official receiver was appointed, but a receiver generally winds down companies, and then when you're winding them down, you don't sign new contracts like membership agreements. And I know there was a period of time when they had stopped while they were explaining to the receiver, if the goal is to have an election, you need to actually be able to continue to sign members. There was a period when that was stopped. I do not know whether or not that's resumed. Because the official receiver order is pending, it's unclear whether or not anyone is acting to bring on new members right now. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Oh, yeah, lots of interest. This microphone. Austin Brower, Consolidated Communications, very cagey, messy affair. Yep. But stepping back from that, what is Aaron learning from watching this from a distance, but sure. being somewhat involved right. in terms of the organizational structures that Aaron operates under? Right. So um, when you can't have something like this happen without someone asking, what are you learning from the experience? Hopefully, at a sufficient distance, Back from the blast radius. Um, so um, uh, the Aaron board actually asked me to look into this at length, and, and we've actually reported back to them. Um, the RIRs collectively in 2015 conducted an accountability review where we actually looked, each RIR looked at its own governance structures. And in the case of Aaron, we were actually in pretty good shape. We did make some changes. Um, uh, we changed our bylaws, you'll see, in 2016 and 17. We had the ability of the board of directors to remove a director in our bylaws. Turns out in the accountability review, we found out we're not allowed to have that in the bylaws, so we removed it. So we actually looked at our governance um, as an organization, and so is the other RIRs. I know recently um, that APNIC recently did a change to their organization structure as well. Part of that uh, driven consequential to this. Um, I guess the most important thing we've looked at is collectively the requirements to be a regional internet registry are very lightweight and they're described in a document called ICP2. It's a uh, internet number registry ICANN uh, ratified document and it was done uh, right at the time when we were recognizing LACNIC and AFRNIC. The requirements in ICP2 are how to recognize an RIR, but there's no implementation procedures on how to do that, just a set of requirements. And there's also no procedures for reviewing or unrecognizing an RIR. Uh, recently, the NRO, the Number Resource Organization, which has an executive body made up of the CEOs of the RIRs, um, tasked the um, ASOAC, the Address um, uh, Supporting Organization Advisory Council, to look at that and supplied a set of draft procedures for recognition and derecognition of an RIR. And the ASOAC is reviewing those, and once we get their report back, we'll probably adopt those. So we'll actually have a process for applying the addition, the, the current ICP-2. Now, the current ICP-2 has very lightweight procedures in it, or very lightweight requirements in it. Independent of that, We've asked the ASOAC to start a process, which will probably take a year or two, about 
what are the more robust requirements for an RIR? For example, in the RIR system, we don't require RIRs to back each other up. Now we do, we all snapshot all sorts of data. We snapshot who is data and RDAP and RPKI, and we, we have copies all over the place. But we don't have what the DNS system has, which is something called uh, ERBO, Emergency Registry Backup Operator, where, where there's an escrow data that allows you to actually stand up a replicant registry. Uh, it's also true that our registries are have more colorful differences in them than DNS operators. We don't have a canonical form. So some of that is going to have to be considered. Should the RIRs all have a canonical backup operator? Should we be required to escrow data with ICANN or IANA uh, for that purpose? And that's going to be something that the ASOAC considers over the next few years. Uh, for people who saw the most recent right meeting, Randy Bush got up on stage and said, this is your registry system. It doesn't belong to John. He said that specifically. I appreciate that. <laughs> it doesn't belong to John. It doesn't belong to the, to the boards of the RIRs. It belongs to you. You need to decide. You need to get involved. And that's very true. You're going to have to set the requirements for what RIRs have to meet. And that's a process that we'll begin to see stuff up coming out of in the next three or four months for calls for participation and draft documents. Very long answer, very sorry. <laughs> oh. Yes, Lee. Lee Howard, IPv4.global by Hilco Stream Bank. Um, for the avoidance of doubt, as you might say, sure. um, in the last couple of slides you were talking about a blog post. The the pronoun we was referring to Aaron's perspective on the blog post, yes. not the characterization, just making sure. Okay. Right, no. um, and um, uh, it may be, if given the first question and response, if Afrinic is not able to recognize new members, new applicants for addresses, maybe operations are not proceeding as normal and it isn't actually working. So I, I know they were recognizing applications. Right. Uh, the current status is a little uncertain with the OR. The OR yep. came in and was set aside and that left things in a slightly undefined state. We're actually are getting updates of that probably this week and next. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, put yourself in the shoes of a internal legal counsel or a finance manager at Afrinic your you have well, maintenance yeah, agreement. Understood. Yeah, you have to renew them. You have you have employees you have to pay, but it's not clear you have the same um, clear line of accountability and authority that you had when you had a CEO and a board. Yes, absolutely. But there's right. clearly an operational problem in that case if the OR if indeed if it's the getting condition. In the way. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And uh, as we hear more, we'll report back um, over here. We have a remote question from sure. Matt Peacock, unaffiliated. John, wonderful update. Though the, all this, how is Afrinet keeping the lights on? Who is paying the bills for it if assets are currently garnished slash frozen? Uh, the good news is um, Afrinet is, the members are paying Afrinet. Afrinet's paying the bills with the members' receipts. The garnishment order was modified and set aside, okay? It originally was in place, and for a two-and-a-half-month period, things were very exciting. Um, and a number of us stepped in to guarantee that things would get paid, and it turned out that we were able to get the, the garnishment order set aside. Uh, clearly, a garnishment order, if it, effective against Afrinic, would be an operational disaster. Um, the fact that one was requested was stunning to all of us in the industry. Okay, this microphone, Warren. Warren Kamari, Google. So first off, thanks for doing this again. Um, once all of the settles, you might want to turn into like a soap opera or yeah. something. <laughs> I imagine defeat from the jaws of victory. I imagine that there's going to be a lot of stories from this, but some of them we may not be able to hear for years because we have to wait for, for times, things to time out and people to move on. So yeah. as you noted, most things continue to work. Right. Might it be reasonable that sort of one way out of this is we end up with a much smaller Afrinic? that doesn't have a monster big board and a hugely compensated CEO and all of the stuff, just a small organization that trundles along and gives out addresses. As it turns out, the organization is almost the same size minus the head, the CEO and the board. Now, you can say that's much smaller, but you've got absolutely everyone still doing the same thing. You just don't have any decision-making powers. Um, uh, that's, if I were a... Uh, back in the days when I ran ISPs, if I were an ISP operating and you told me my RIR would have no decision-making uh, body and no no head, I would be terrified. So uh, you're you're 
your suggestion, I guess I'm a little... little Sorry, uh, I, I didn't mean no board. I just meant take away a lot of the privileges and control of the board and have more of it built into the bylaws and process stuff. Yes. So not no decision, just yes. less heavyweight drama. When you, see, when you see calls going out for updates to ICP2 and what a good RIR looks like, you should suggest that. Yes, that will be coming. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, Maria, um, that one, uh, but uh, in my personal capacity as a uh, lawyer amateur, yep. um, I must admire your capability to explain all those uh, law right. intricacies to, uh, to public. Yep. And I must also admire all uh, those actors who are using the law uh, for their uh, for uh, for what they need and um, maybe also quite abusing the law because i see uh, lots of those processes and i don't see much more what they could do yeah so when you look at some things that have occurred various like the garnishment order, for example. The idea that a commercial dispute can result in a garnishment order that results in an operational, and it was borderline operational shutdown of an organization that serves not, not customers but in one country, but customers on an entire continent, you realize that when you have an RIR incorporated, it should be done in such a way that it's really unlikely that the jurisdiction it's in would ever grant such an order. So it turns out there's a lesson learned, and I'll give you an example. I don't know how many people, I was around when Afrinic was formed. I was, I was actually in Dar es Salaam during the fir very first meeting, and if you had told me that day, oh, by the way, if this legally all gets completely log jammed, the Privy Council of the, uh, the, of the UK uh, will be involved. I would have said, what? So there's learning experiences here about structure and governance that we'll need to take into consideration. And, um, and, and there's going to be some hard decisions, it's hard decisions about what we think good governance is. Because we did all this 20 years ago, and uh, it's worked very well, but we happen to have found one of the edge cases, and it has literally burst the system at the seams over there. As I said, if it weren't for the diligence and the um, loyalty of the Afrinic staff, we would all have a very bad situation right now. I don't see any other questions, and this is supposed to be a, a lightning talk, so I need to get off stage. Thank you. <laughs>